So we're going around the house now. We're looking for air sealing issues. And a closet like this under the stairs, very typical place for bad air leakage. So let's have a look. You can see some drywall's been put in here, but it was never finished. So it was never sealed. If you look near the top of, of this closet, and you can see all the way back to insulation that's been shoved in the wall cavity. That's all open to the outside. So, and back there also, this is cold in here and it would, the wind probably blows through here on a windy day. One way to test the air tightness of your home is using an incense stick. You can go around, especially on a windy day, and go check out the places where you suspect it might be leaking and see if the smoke blows. I'm going to do that right here at the join between this addition wall and the original house. Right at that junction is a typical place for air leakage and hopefully the camera can see that there's a nice big crack, almost an eighth of an inch at the bottom there. So here we see lots of cracks in the wall. See all these cracks? There's a big one, there's a big one up there. Every one of those cracks is a hole to outside. Basically the way to think of it is any crack, any hole in any wall is basically a hole open to the outside to seal all of them. These are easy. You can use caulk. Looks like it was started already. Someone use some clear caulk. Just seal it all up. Up in the ceiling too, if you can see that, all those cracks are air holes through into the attic. So there again, seal them all up. At the edge of where the wall meets the ceiling, that's a great place for air leakage. So seal that up, probably behind this half quarter round. That'd be a great place. I can feel the air blowing through here. Yeah, right here, a lot of air blowing through. When it comes to air sealing, you want to think about all the places where air can get in or out of your house. One of the places that tends to be ignored a lot are this type of old stovepipe hole. Now, this hole, as you can see, has already been sealed. It's been sealed with one part foam and it's a full air seal um, and a little bit of insulation. So this hole is where a wood stove pipe once went. So a wood stove would have existed right here about where I'm standing. And the exhaust pipe would have come out this way, turned into here and gone up the brick chimney. But this is a chimney that's never going to be used again. Up top, it's been sealed up. It doesn't even stick out through the house, through the ceiling anymore. If, however, you still use this chimney, maybe for your furnace pipe that's coming through here and there's still heat that goes in here, you don't want to do this. The chance is possible that it could be a fire risk. Probably not, but it might be, and you don't want to take the chance. In that case, something like this is a good solution. So this is built specifically to seal up here. Now to make it a good air seal, you take something like this, which is a high temperature cock. It's designed for cars, so it's designed for very high temperatures. And you want to slather it on all along this edge so that when you put this on and you knock it in all the way you get a good tight air seal with the cock this it could go on further i'm not going to put it on all the way but a nice mallet or even a hammer to knock it in as tight as it can go that's what you want and then you have a perfect air seal that's fully fireproof and heat proof a lot of plumbing penetrations are built much bigger than they need to be. Look at this one up here. This is the bottom of the tub. This is where the tub drains out. And there's this big hole cut into the floor. So all of that is a huge air leak. All this cold air that's down in the basement can run up into there and make your bathroom colder. Almost every house I go into has a big hole like that that needs to be air sealed. The way you need to do it is to take 
some sort of very stiff board. Use cardboard if you have to, that's not your best option. Um, probably the best is, say, half inch, uh, half inch foam board because it's thin, it's easy to cut, it's easy to control. There's also a material called thermopan that's basically a cardboard that's covered in foil on both sides, so it's got good longevity. And you're going to cut and you're going to seal up that hole as best as you can and then you can use great stuff or caulk to fill the edges and make it airtight. So a lot of houses I go into, there's a pet door, but they don't have a pet anymore. Now, this one, at least, unlike many, this one has a cover on it. That's great. But still, look at this cover. That's just a big hole to outside. So, what I recommend, it's a big deal to change your door. So, what I recommend is to seal this up. Get a piece of blue board, dough board, something. Seal it up, caulk it, make this a full air seal, and then stick this back on. Like this, it's not an air seal. There's still air coming in. Now this here, this shows you the foundation is settling in a not very healthy way. This floor, that's a hole all the way down to the crawl space. So this is a big hole to outside, big time air sealing issue. The easiest way to deal with this is just with a can of urethane foam, mostly the, the main product out there is called Great Stuff. It's not the prettiest solution, but it works and it's easy and it's cheap. You just spray it in there and fill that whole area up.